So now you have your brand new telescope all assembled, looking good. There's only one small problem. How the heck do you use this thing? Okay, so now you have your telescope, you know how to assemble it. The biggest problem now is how do you actually use this? I run into a lot of people who this is their first telescope and it's an EQ mount, which makes it a little more difficult. So they don't understand. They think it's just figure out how to make it point a certain direction and look through it. But then how do you find stuff? It's a little more complex than that. And we need to start with the very, very basics. So the first thing you're going to need is a level. And you can use pretty much any kind of little level. This one came free with a TV wall mount kit. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna level it this way and this way, right angles to each other to make sure that the uh, base is level. Now, in this particular video, this isn't actually level, but we're not gonna go through all that. But you want it level in two different directions at 90 degrees from each other. The reason for that, you'll, you'll get to a little later, but this piece has to be level before you do anything else. So get it where you want it, preferably on something solid, concrete, deck of work, uh, anything that's fairly flat and level, and get this level. Once you've done that, then you can take your mount and put it on there. Now the mount, as we've talked about before, just screws on like this. Okay. So now, next thing you probably want to do is actually put the scope on here. Once everything's you know nice and tight, where you're going to go. So we take our mount, our <laughs> optical tube, we slide it on top of the mount, and we tighten it down. Now I usually try and get the bar this rail right here on the bottom roughly in the middle of the mount uh, you know you don't have to be exact we're just trying to get close so the next piece of this puzzle is you need to balance everything an eq mount really any kind of mount works best when it's as balanced as it can get but the eq mount is actually designed to be balanced hence your uh, counterweights uh, that you have down here there's two directions to balance it. And I'm going to rotate them out so that we can see a little better. Okay, so the first way we're gonna balance it is I'm going to loosen this and balance it this way. Make sure that's tight. And you want to move your counterweights until the force required to move up and down at the same time are about the same. That's actually pretty close. Okay. So once that's done, make sure your counterweights are nice and tight so they're not going to move anywhere. And the next way we're going to balance this, let me rotate this back around. And then I'm going to rotate this towards you. Now you notice I've already got an eyepiece in there. I've got my uh, finder scope in there. And we're going to attempt to balance it this way. Okay, so in this case, it's a little nose heavy. So there's a couple of ways to do this. One is you can loosen these two knobs and slide the scope inside the rings. It's probably the safest but it also gives you the least amount of flexibility because you wind up running into this or, you know, depending on the scope, you could run into stuff doing that. And you could also loosen the two black knobs right here that hold the rail in. If you do that, you need to make sure that you're holding this scope really well. Because if you loosen these and you're not really holding this scope, what's gonna happen is the scope's gonna fall off and hit the ground and break. All right. So I've done this like a gazillion times. So I'm gonna do it this way. 
and I'm loosening them just enough so that I can force this thing to slide and tighten it back up. I am not loosening it enough that it could actually come out. So now, that's pretty good. All right, so now we've got it balanced in two different directions. So tighten that down, tighten that down. Okay, so now we've gone through, we've leveled it, we've uh, balanced it. The next thing we need to do is what's called polar align. And polar aligning means that the angle of the scope, actually the angle of this, this mount down here, this axis right here needs to be pointed at the North Star. There are lots of, of ways to tweak that too, but the basic idea is if you can spin your scope around, and let's say that that way is north, I can get down and I can look right up here and see the North Star looking right in the line. Okay? That gets you close. The other way to get close is on most EQ mounts, you have a measured little gauge right here, and this has got a pointer. And what that does is this is your degrees and latitude. So if you open up your phone, you go to Google Maps, you type in your address, whatever, it'll show you your uh, degrees and latitude. So you want to set it roughly here. Now I'll warn you, these, I've never found one that's really accurate because even this one I can feel the sticker was put on too far to the back. So that means this, this is really off. But this will get you close enough to start to look right up here. Now a third way, flip this back around, is people talk about being able to look through the scope when the scope is aligned with the mount so that you should be able to see the North Star in your, your viewfinder. That's all fine and dandy and that's relatively true except getting it lined up with the scope, the mount and the scope, can be a little difficult for a newcomer. Now keep in mind that you need the scope at what I call top dead center, which is uh, you know, as far up with the weights pointed as far down as they'll go, and you need it perfectly in line this way as well, so that uh, you're actually looking on the correct axis. But you can, you can always deal with that later. If you set your, your gauge on the side to get close and then eyeball it with something like this, you're close enough. And the reason I say you're close enough is you're not going to be doing long uh, exposure astrophotography with this. It's going to be visual and short exposure stuff. So you're going to be close enough. The next part is kind of optional, but you really ought to do it. Um, and unfortunately, it requires you to buy something that didn't come with the telescope but it's an invaluable thing that will last you forever. And what we're gonna do is collimate the telescope. So I take out the eyepiece because I have a laser collimator here. And this little guy um, shines a laser beam into the telescope, which goes down to the mirror, bounces back, and comes back up and is displayed in this little piece right here. So we insert that where the eyepiece goes. So let me flip this around. All right, now hopefully you can see right here in this viewport, there's a uh, the reflection of the laser. And what you're gonna do is on the back end here, you have six little knobs. You have three small, three large. The three small ones hold everything in place. The three large ones are for adjusting the angle of the mirror. So what you do is, when you get your telescope, odds are this is gonna be way off. Now on this one, that's pretty accurate because I've already collimated this telescope. So this is typically gonna be way off. It'll be way off at the edge or you may not even see it. So what you do is you loosen the three, you don't pull them out, but you loosen the three smaller uh, knobs back here. And then you can turn the larger knobs, and as you turn the larger knob, this laser beam will move. And in this particular model, I'll leave a link below so that you can get you one of these if you don't have one. In this particular model, 
there is like a cutout right in the center so that you can see when the laser beam is in the center. So you adjust this and as you adjust it, you'll notice it gets closer and further away, uh, either closer or further away from that center piece. And you twist and you twist and you twist till you get it closer, closer, closer until you get it as close as you can get to the center. Now you don't have to be perfect and especially in a scope that's not designed for long exposure astrophotography, which this one absolutely is not, um, you don't have to be perfect. But if you're way off, like, you know, this one was way over on the edge, just, I mean, it was on the black, um, the views that you'll get will be horrible. And I noticed that. So I collimated it, adjusted everything. And once I got it close to the center, I went ahead and tightened these uh, smaller knobs back down. Now, when I say tighten, I mean, you twist it until it stops, and then you give it like a 32nd of, of a turn, maybe a 16th of a turn more, just to snug it. You do not want to over tighten them. You just want to snug them and tight enough that they're not going to back off on you, okay? So once, once your collimation is done, you will uh, have much better views on your telescope. Um, so the next thing, next thing is, Finder scopes are nifty and they help you find your target. But how do you line this up with what you see through here? Because I mean, you can adjust it with these two black screws, but how do you know where the adjustment is? Okay, this is actually fairly simple. You take your telescope out during the day and you find you top of a tree, top of a telephone pole, top of a radio tower, water tower, something off in the distance. It needs to be far enough away that you don't have trouble focusing on it, but close enough that you can find it fairly easily using your telescope with the 25 millimeter lens that this one came with. If yours came with something different, use the largest numbered lens. If it came with a 30 millimeter, use that. If it only came with a 15, use that. Use the biggest numbered lens that you have. That has the least magnification. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the, the lens cover off, obviously, and you're going to look through, you're going to point the telescope at that object. Then you're going to look through here. You're going to use the focus knob uh, to focus in on that object and get it as close to the center of, of your field of view as you can. Once that's done, you know, make sure everything's tight on the telescope, doesn't move. And then take lens cap off here, look through here. Odds are you will see the same object, but it's not going to be anywhere near the center. Use the two black screws, I don't know if you can see that, but this moves quite a bit. So use the two black screws to get the crosshairs in your finder scope dead on that target. Now you've done this during the day, so once you do that, at night you'll be able to look through here, find the star, the moon, the planet, whatever you're looking at in here, and then look in here and you should be able to see it. Now, a couple of little tips. First off, what happens when you look through here and everything's blurry? Okay, this piece turns separately from this piece. So if you turn this, you can focus and you can get that in a nice sharp focus by, you know, you may have to give it a whole bunch of turns and then hold this back piece while you're turning this. And then once you get that into focus, you're good. You won't have to touch it again. I've actually seen some people put tape on here so it can't turn. Okay. Um, next problem you may run into is what happens when you, let me turn this around, what happens when you turn the focusing knob, turn the focusing knob and the eyepiece doesn't move, so you're not changing focus. Well, there is a silver knob on the bottom here. If you loosen that, once again, do not pull it out, just loosen it a little bit and then try and that'll work. This is a lock so that once you get it into focus, you can tighten this and now moving this won't change your focus. So your object will stay in focus. Neat, huh? Okay, so now you are leveled, balanced, uh, you've got it polar aligned, you've got your finder scope in focus, you've got it set up to where it's pointing at the same thing as your tube, you've done your collimation. So now how do you find objects? Okay, well, obviously you can just look around, okay? And there are websites that'll tell you roughly this high in the sky, this direction. 
uh, you know, you can use a compass or, or something in, on your phone. And that will get you to a lot of things like planets. They're fairly easy to see. But if you wanted to find anything nifty that's, you know, not Saturn and Jupiter or the moon, then you're going to need a little more accuracy and directions on how to find stuff. Okay, so EQ mounts are set up with dials, one here and one there. And they measure the right ascension and declination. That, think of that as longitude and latitude for the sky. And that's almost exactly what it is. So a lot of um, object databases will give you the, the location of the object in right ascension and declination. Now explaining all of that is a little bit beyond what this video is, is for, but uh, you can use right ascension and declination and these two dials to get you where you need to be. Now, one of the things, one of the cheats is you can, if, you, if you're not sure where right ascension and declination really work out, what you can do is find an object in the sky that's close to what you want to look at. So let's say you can find Saturn, you see Saturn, you can look through here, you can see the rings, that's awesome. Well, you're looking for a open cluster and the open clusters, right ascension and declination is very close to Saturn. So you can start at Saturn, set your dials here, and then move the dials until they point to the right ascension and declination you want, and you should be good to go. That's a little cheap way to do it. There's other ways too. They're just gonna take way too long for me to explain in the video. But I'll leave you some resources down below so that you can get there. But that's how you know where to point the telescope without a computer. Okay, so next thing is eyepiece. So I told you earlier to use the eyepiece with the biggest number. So what does the number mean? Once again, we're not gonna go into all the math and stuff behind that, but what you need to know is the, the bigger the number, um, this guy's telescope came with a 25, a 15, I think a 25, a 15, and a five, or 25, a 10, and a five. I think it's 25, 10, and a five. And so, the lower the number, the more magnification you have. Now, before you run out and buy a whole bunch of really small number uh, eyepieces, there are other things to consider too. The bigger the, the eyepiece number, typically, especially on cheap eyepieces, or should I say less expensive eyepieces, um, the bigger this glass, okay? And the bigger the glass, the easier it is to look through and see what you want. Um, Small number eyepieces, you know, fives, twos, have just got this little bitty pinhole that's hard as heck to get your eye over and hold it over while you're trying to view. So the bigger the number, the, the easier it is for you to view something. That's number one. Number two, the bigger the number, the brighter everything's gonna be. So if you look at a, uh, a 25 and a five, the five is going to, the stars in it, are going to be remarkably dimmer than in the 25 as a general rule. Um, and last, but certainly not least, the views that you get, if you look at the moon, let's say, and you look at the crater and look at the edges of the crater, the edge of the crater in a 25 millimeter will be far sharper than that same crater viewed with a 15 millimeter. Now with the 15 millimeter, you will be closer but it will be blurry-er. Now, I'm not saying you can't get a sharp image. I'm saying it will be blurry-er. So, always keep in mind that as you increase magnification, uh, technically field of view, but we're going to call it magnification. As you increase magnification and this number drops, you are going to get a dimmer, fuzzier image. So, maximum magnification is not always what you want. For me, and for most people who've been doing this a while, the trick is you want the most magnification of, let's say, the moon that you can get while maintaining a sharp, bright picture. And that doesn't always mean you jump from the 25 to the 5. Sometimes that means you drop from the 25 down to a 17. It, it really depends on your viewing conditions and a whole bunch of other stuff. But always try and use the biggest number that you can get away with to get the sharpest image. Okay. So, next thing. I want to talk about the camera adapter that comes with this telescope. Now it comes, may come 
pre-assembled, but it comes in two basic pieces. This piece is for your eyepiece, and this piece holds your phone. And the way it works is really simple. You take this round piece, it unscrews. Okay? With the piece that's like that, it's got a big hole on both sides, threads up, eyepiece, the part where you look through the eyepiece, up the piece that goes into the telescope, down. You drop that into there, then you take the piece with the little hole, you screw it back on like this, get it nice and snug. Now your eyepiece is captured in that little adapter. So now you take this, and you see how it goes up, over, and up, and you want to screw this in like that. Okay? Then you take your eyepiece and you drop it into there. You mount your phone here. This is spring loaded. Ooh, I say it is. So it's spring loaded. And there's a knob on the back that increases the tension here so that you can move this, position your phone so that the uh, camera is right over that little hole, and then let go. Now you can take pictures with the included remote. You can set a, if you don't have the remote, don't like the remote, you can set a timer on your phone to take a picture in like 10 seconds. Because what you don't want to do is touch the phone because that adds a lot of vibration to it, more than you know. So you touch the phone to tell it to take a picture in 10 seconds, you back off, you wait, you let it do its 10 second countdown, take the picture, then you look and see what you got. So that's how that works. So now, one more little tidbit I want to let, let you in on. Why is there a hole with a cover in your front cover? Okay, so the number one reason there's a hole there is because the smaller the aperture of this telescope. So that's big, that's little. The dimmer the object is going to be that you're viewing. So why do you want a dim object? Well, let me tell you something. The moon is nothing but a big light colored rock floating in the sky being lit up by the sun. The part of the moon that you can see is lit by direct sunlight. So go outside, look at a light colored rock in direct broad daylight and look at how bright that is. I'm in Texas, that's really freaking bright down here. So this gives you an option of taking this off while leaving this cover on, looking through your eyepiece and having a sharper, dimmer picture of the moon. Uh, now it'll work with anything that you look at that's bright. Warning, not the sun. You do not ever point this at the sun. Not even joking. Without a real solar filter. Now the solar filter could be a complete coverage filter that covers this entire piece like this cover does. Or it could be a cover that just covers this piece and you use them in conjunction. Following in on more warnings, don't use this if you're pointed at the sun. I would just flat take that off so that you can't do that. They make solar uh, finders that you can replace this, put your solar finder in there, and go to town. It's not just this with a solar cover over it, although you can do that too. It's a special deal that allows you to look this way and see when you're pointed at the sun. Okay, um, so that pretty much covers the basic uses of this. Um, I guess the, the very last piece, which is probably, probably pretty obvious to most people, but we'll try it anyway. So once you get your telescope pointed, now that's the other thing, EQ mounts are designed to do this. So you're tracking across the sky like this. Okay, so once you get your telescope pointed at something, you get it tightened down, that something moves. When the something moves, you know, moving this whole telescope, that little bit becomes tricky. That's when you use your slow motion controls. 
These little guys allow you to move the telescope in right ascension and declination a little bit at a time and you can follow the object as it moves across the sky. Once again, that's why you need this balanced, leveled, and uh, polar aligned. Because then, you're, as the objects move across the sky in right ascension and declination, you can track them in right ascension and declination using your slow motion controls. And yes, you can usually get little motors that'll clip onto here that will follow them for you. I haven't found one for this telescope yet, but I'll bet they exist. If they do, I'll post something down below. That is about it for this 130 millimeter uh, Geisker uh, Newtonian reflector telescope. The basics on how to use it, I'll get you some more information and links and stuff down below. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below. Be sure and subscribe to my videos if you want even more information, because I'm sure this guy will be featured in some more stuff. Um, and that's it. Clear skies.